Safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the yeah. L. Now, uh, what we did last Thursday, uh, Barbara, we picked up the, the hint to this, this song. You see that first verse that says, What a fellowship, what a joy divine and then when you get to the next part leaning on the everlasting and the same thing that you did the first is this next part what a blessing that you see that what it's like the beginning peace is mine leaning on the everlasting so you said we broke it down so you can uh, see how simple it is because it's the same thing so what you did at the beginning, I'm going to do it again. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting. Same thing, different words. What a blessedness, what a, see the, same, see the similarity? Leaning on the everlasting arm. Lee, Frederick, go inside of Beverly. Go on the side of Beverly so you can pick it up. Least and secure, yes, from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the ever. Go to verse two, just warming up. Oh, how bright the path grows from. Which verse is that? Day to day, Lee. Because I'm not even looking at the program. <laughs> Maybe make them up. Uh, so it's oh how sweet to walk. I'm coming to pass. Oh how sweet to walk. Ignore me. <laughs> Verse two. I'm sorry. Oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting. Same thing, different words. Is that oh how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the ever. That's good. Now you go to the chorus. Leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. Yeah, we have ours. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, the only other one you need to go over is, we, is our, one of our little main songs. Is that's Come Let Us Worship the Lord. So I'm just going to do it part by part first. I see no sopranos are here. So if no sopranos are here, I'll fall set with. We have uh, two altos, Barbara and uh, Florence. And then Beverly you and Frederica do the second alto, a tenor part. So you know this. We're just going to review it because it's been a while since we say like several months. So uh, let me go over the parts first. So since sopranos are here, I'll do soprano if they don't show up. But this. I can't see anything about my glasses. Good morning. Good morning. What email I sent you? What key I said that first word? And what a fellowship. Is it, did I say G or F? Can you remember you got that message I sent on your phone? I, I need.
taking it with me. Good morning.
Good morning, Good Shepherd family, and welcome to worship on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost and also this day where we remember the events of 9-11 and those in our families and our friends and our neighbors who have been impacted in a mighty way by that event. In today's scriptures, you are going to hear about the grumbling of the religious leaders <clears throat> in today's gospel, and that grumbling is actually our holy hope. Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. The fact that our God saves the lost is not only our holy hope, it is our only hope. The writer of 2 Timothy, you will hear, reminds us of this. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And for that, we are very thankful. So let us begin now with our call to worship. Come, beloved of God, the blistering wind of life is not the end. May the eye of the storm still us into wholeness and hope. May the wind of God turn us around toward trust in holy promises. May our promises to God be pressed anew into our hearts and minds. May everything of excess be released and refined for, God's, for, for love's good work. May God's vision of a world made new arise from God's wind in and through us. Amen. Amen. We'll now consider with, continue with our order for confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sin, confident that God is ready to forgive. Join me as we pray, saying, Loving Shepherd, pour your grace upon us this day. Seek those who are wandering and lost, for they too need your grace. For you know when we are wandering, and you know when we are lost. You know when we have sinned, and when we have forsaken your call. Forgive us and bring us home. Reclaim us and make us your own. For you are our shepherd, and we are the sheep of your pasture. For this grace and mercy, we are ever grateful. Amen. Rejoice, beloved. God has changed our circumstances for the better. Christ's mercy and grace redeem us and brings us home. We who are lost, who were lost, have been found. Thanks be to God and amen. Day to day, lead. 
lightning on the everlasting arm. From all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting. Arm. I have blessed peace with. My Lord, so near, leaning on the everlasting arm, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the ever. Refrain again, leaning, leaning, leaning. From all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning for the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. <laughs> The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ which guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of god and for the unity of all let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the lord lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious lord Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters, here in the sanctuary and online on Zoom. Welcome this morning to the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. We are here this morning to continue to give God all the praise and the glory. Because he woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Yeah, yeah. So that's just on that premise alone is deserving of God. We need to praise him. Okay. Oh, holy wind of God, sweep through our lives. Pause us into your presence, slowing our breathless pace. Refine in us a renewed willingness to bear gracious goodness into the chaos of the world. Let our memories on this day call forth an alternative to the easy response of violence for violence. Form instead a steady commitment to return love in the face of fear, hope in the midst of despair, and mercy for every brokenness of the world's design. By this, 
form anew the heart and mind of Christ in us, here, now, today. Amen. Okay. The announcement uh, for today is as follows. Uh, confirmation classes will resume on September the 19th. And if you have young people in your household in grade six through high school who have not been confirmed, they can participate in this class. If you have not already been contacted and have a young person who would like to participate, please contact the church office for further information. Pastor Linda wants to be in contact with our college and grad students, whether they are at home or on campus. Please email her the address, the student's name and address, school and mailing address. This, is also, this also applies to any high schoolers who are attending school away from home. Amy Rolla and her daughter Ellen are downsizing and the items listed below are available for free. You will need to arrange pickup. Please call the church office for contact information. And the list of the stuff being offered is listed here in the, um, in the on the information sheet. And on Wednesday evening, our study will resume. This is this Wednesday coming on 14th of September at 7 p.m. So join us, it's fun. You know, it's a lot of information, we learn a lot. So please join us on the 14th of September at 7 p.m. Uh, before I go to that, if there is anyone in the sanctuary or on Zoom that have an announcement from the community, you can speak, um, a mic will be provided, or online, our brothers and sisters online can put it in the chat, and, and Mark will... Um, you know, will give us the information. Oh. Good morning, church family. Two announcements, two happy announcements. Oh. Today is Joy Washington's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Sister Joy. And also Barbara Henry. Oh, happy birthday, Barbara. Any other? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, um, the announcements. On Wednesday, September the 14th, 2022, at 7 a.m., we'll have our um, devotion and prayer on Zoom. And at 7 p.m., we'll have the evening gathering, the Bible study. And on Thursday, September the 15th, at 7 p.m., the music ministry will have rehearsal in the sanctuary. And on Sunday the 18th, of course, we will meet again in the sanctuary or on Zoom for our service of Holy Communion. Pastor? Good morning again. Uh, just one short announcement. We have no one signed up to do our Black History Moment for the remainder of the year. So if you are so inclined, please contact me. It doesn't have to be a full dissertation, just something that's about four or five minutes. 
so that we can continue um, to learn more about our own history. There are so many hidden facts that many of us do not know. And I think that every time that we have it, each month we find out about someone or something in our history that we were unaware of. So please contact me if you're willing to offer a Black History Moment. Thank you. So we will continue with our worship now by blessing our lector for today. You don't have to go down the steps, Florence. You can just come stand right here. Please join me. God of justice and mercy, by your Holy Spirit, may the words that are read and the reflections of our hearts be worthy of your grace. Please join me now as we pray. Holy God, your word is a light in darkness and a source of blessing. Bless Florence as she reads the scripture. May the truth you offer stay with us when we leave this place. May all that is lost in our lives be found through your spirit. May the brokenness of this world be healed and turned to love and hope. And may we strive to be your faithful disciples in the body of Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome back, Pastor. The first reading is taken from Exodus 32, verses 7 through 14. While Moses is on Mount Sinai, the people grow restless and make a golden calf to worship. Today's reading shows Moses as the mediator between an angry God and a sinful people. Moses reminds us, God, that the Israelites are God's own people and boldly asks for mercy for them. The reading. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff necked they are. Now, let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you I will make a great nation but Moses implored the Lord his God and said O oh Lord why does this wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abram, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring to the people. Word of God, word of life. Today's psalm is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. You delight in truth deep within me and would have known. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. The letters to Timothy and Titus are called the pastoral epistles because they contain advice especially intended for leaders in the church. Here, the mercy shown to Paul, who once persecuted the church, is cited as evidence that even the most unworthy may become witnesses to the grace of God. I am grateful to Christ our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me, he, he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a prosecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in my own belief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the angels, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Beloved of God, I invite you this morning to listen to the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is, that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or 
What woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This, beloved, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. the Lord everybody amen this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it amen amen yes amen yes Lord thank you Jesus
it one more time. Come, just a chorus. Come, let us worship, worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship Him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Amen. This morning, beloved, I'm beginning with a question. Does this sound familiar? I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Sounds familiar? So I can't begin to count how many times I've sung these famous lines from John Newton's Amazing Grace. Like many of you, I learned this hymn when I was just a child. And I still find in some ways that its language is assuring and it's beautiful and it's moving. However, before I go Further, I'd like to know if there's anyone here, anyone here, anyone online who knows the origin or the history of this hymn. Sister Yvonne, go closer, go to the mic so we can hear you. <laughs> yes, um, John Newton was a slave trader, I think. Um, and, um, you know, used to trade slaves. And um, he, he had some, some kind of revelation. I don't remember exactly, but um, then, you know, he decided to write the song. Something to that. I okay, that. that's but good. But I know he was a slave trader. That's true. Yes. That's true. <laughs> Anybody have any additional information they'd like to add to that? Nobody. So yeah, he was a slave trader. And then he fell on hard times. And, and, and something in him clicked. And he was converted to Christianity. And he wrote these lovely words that we hear. And after his conversion, he then became an advocate for the abolishing of slavery. So those words are, are near and dear to many of us, but for me, as I thought about it this week, here's the thing for me. As beloved as this hymn is, I am not convinced anymore that I can fit my faith into that neat before and after story that we just heard about John Newton. I once was lost, but now I'm found. For me, beloved, the truth is that my lostness is never over. I've come to realize that lostness remains a central theme and a central feature of my personal relationship with God. And if this week's gospels, gospel reading has anything to say about it, I believe that that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. As Luke sets the scene in this gospel, Jesus is once again in trouble, as Jesus is often. He's in trouble for hanging out with the wrong people. I've been known to do that. As all the tax collectors, you know, that he says, he hangs out with all the tax collectors and all the sinners. They all come and listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes are like, this guy continues to welcome sinners and even eats with them. And he does it right in front of us. And of course, Jesus, in typical Jesus fashion, in response, he tells those scandalized religious leaders two parables, two stories. 
the shepherd who leaves his flock of 99 to go find one that is lost. He searches, he finds it, he comes home, and he says, hey, let's have a party. The second, a woman who lost one coin. She lights a lamp, she sweeps her house, she cleans it from top to bottom until she finds that coin. And when she does, just like the shepherd, she calls her friends and neighbors and says, hey, let's have a party. Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. So beloved, for me this week, the first thing that struck me about these parables is how many years I have spent misreading these parables. For a long time, I thought that the lost lamb and the lost coin represented the sinners out there, those who are not part of the fold, those who are beyond this country that we call Christianity, those who are beyond the purview of God, beyond the purview of choice, church, and beyond my purview even. And maybe just like me for many years, you have heard this story in that exact same way. But this week it struck me that no, that's not it. That's not the way to read this story. The lost lamb in the first parable belongs to the shepherd. That lost lamb belongs to that shepherd. That lost lamb was part of that flock. And likewise with the coin. That coin always belonged to that woman. It was her possession. So in other words, beloved, these parables are not about some lost outsiders. It's not about them finding salvation and coming to Christ. These parables are about us, about us who are the insiders, about us who are the churchgoers, the bread and wine consumers, the Bible readers, the choir singers. These parables to me are about lostness on the inside. So you may be looking at me and saying, well, Pastor, exactly what do you mean by that? I see your faces, even with the mask on. Well, for me, what this means is that lostness is, lo is not an experience that is exclusive to people who are non-followers of Christ or not yet followers of Christ. Lostness happens to each and every one of us. It happens within the beloved community all the time. It's not like we cross over once and for all from sinful lostness into righteous foundness. If you are anything like me, you get lost over and over and over again. I know that I do. And God finds me over and over and over again. Lostness is not some blasphemous deviation or some irregularity. I believe, beloved, that lostness is part and parcel of a life of faith. But what does it really mean to be lost? Well, that can run the gamut. But here's some things that I thought about. It means that we lose our sense of belonging. We lose our capacity to trust. We lose our felt experience of God's presence. We lose our will to persevere. 
Some of us get lost when illness descends upon us. Some of us get lost at the death of a loved one. Some of us get lost and have a crisis of faith. Some of us get lost just from trying to keep up with the day-to-day -day that keeps us reeling. Some of us get lost when our marriages and relationships change or die. Some of us get lost when our children break our hearts. Some of us get lost in the throes of addiction or anxiety or lust or unforgiveness or bitterness. You see, beloved, the possibilities of lostness are unending. But the one that, that, that struck me the most, the thing that I thought about this week, is that some of us, beloved, get lost when we are right at home, when we are right here in the very walls of the church. We get lost when prayer turns to dust in our mouths. We get lost when scripture seems like it's dead and has no meaning for us. We get lost when we're sitting on a pew on Sunday morning and we really don't wanna be there. We get lost when even the most well-intentioned sermon just seems to snatch the breath out of our lungs. We get lost when the table of bread and wine that once really nourished us continues to leave us hungry. Believe me, beloved, we all get lost. Some of us get so miserably lost that the shepherd has to wander through the craggy wilderness to find us and bring us back home. We get so totally lost that that housewife has to light her lamp and pick up her broom and sweep through every nook and cranny until she discovers us and then rejoices. Now, maybe to you, these versions of lostness sound trivial. But if you notice that the searching in these parables that Jesus tells, that searching is not for show. That shepherd isn't just pretending to look for lost sheep. That woman isn't just putting on an act with her lamp and her broom. Because what is lost is really, truly lost. Even though the one who seeks is our God. So how wonderful and how astonishing is that fact that God God contends with genuine stakes when it comes to our lostness. God experiences authentic and real-time loss. And then God searches and God persists and God lingers and God turns the house upside down looking for us in our lostness. And when at last God finds what God has been looking for, God cannot contain the joy that is felt, the joy that wells up inside. So God invites the whole neighborhood over and shares the good news of the recovery and throws the party to end all parties. As usual, there's something I have to admit, and I admit that this is not the way I usually picture God. But my holy imagination is always going. But even with that, I can't easily imagine God as this foolishly love-hungry shepherd that would leave these 99 to come way over here and find me. 
go through all the bushes and climb over all the ledges. I can't, I can't conceive of a God as a woman who is bent over a broom and poking into the dusty and cobweb corners, hoping to see that little glimmer of the thing that was lost. You see, beloved, I struggle to conceive of a God as one who seeks tiny little me, insignificant me, hard to find me. And maybe you have that same struggle too. But maybe the most scandalous aspect of these lost and found parables is not that I still get lost or that you might still get lost. Maybe what is most scandalous is that these parables reveal, at least for me, the true nature of God. God the searcher and the seeker, God the determined finder. If these parables that Jesus says are true, then God does not hang out where I assume God is hanging out. If these parables from Jesus are true, then God is not in the fold with the 99. God is not curled up on her couch polishing her nine coins. God is where the lost things are. God is where lostness reigns. God is in the darkness of the wilderness, and God is in the most remote, obscure corners. So that says to me, beloved, if I want to find God, if I want to be close to God, then I have to seek the lost. I have to go get the lost. I have to leave the safety of being on the inside and venture outside. But most of all, I have to recognize my own lostness. And then I have to consent to being found. Beloved, that is not an easy task. For one thing, it is really hard for me to believe, as I said before, that I am worth looking for, even on my best day. What's so significant about me? It's hard for me to believe that I'm not expendable. It's hard for me to believe a lot of times that I am loved enough and desired enough to warrant a long and diligent search just for me. And I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way. It is often very hard for me to believe that God will not give up on me, that there is something that I'm going to do where God's just going to wipe his hands clean and say, all right, Linda, you're on your own. It's hard for me to believe that God would feel so much joy at recovering me that she would tell the whole world the good news and then throw a big party. But as hard as that is for me to believe, beloved, that is the gospel truth. That is, in fact, the case. Jesus is telling these parables to the religious insiders who won't admit their own lostness. Jesus is telling these stories to folks who can't reconcile their brand of religiousness with Jesus' mind-boggling claim that lostness is a virtue. 
In her book, An Altar for the World, Barbara Brown Taylor, who I read often and love as a theological writer, makes a strong case for the virtue of lostness. She argues that lostness makes us stronger at the edges and softer at the center. Lostness teaches us vulnerability. Lostness teaches us about empathy, about humility, about patience. Lostness shows us who we really are and who God really is. Thirteenth-century Sufi mystic Rumi said it this way, what you seek is seeking you. This is true and this is grace. So maybe it's even truer than what I can't or won't seek. Maybe it is true even truer that what I can't or what I won't seek, that that is still seeking me. So beloved, I say to you today that God looks for us when our lostness, <clears throat> excuse me, God looks for us when our lostness is so convoluted and so profound that we can't even pretend that we are looking for God. God is still looking for us. But even in those bleak and hopeless places, beloved, God will find us. God will find us. And for me to tie this back to what I began with, this truly is amazing grace. This is our grace, beloved. So today I invite you and I encourage you to embrace your lostness. Embrace your lostness so that you can step into the great and glorious foundness that God has waiting for you. Beloved, we all need to be found and God is seeking. Amen.
life when we've been there. Oh, when we've been there, ten thousand years, bright shining us the sun. We know less days to see. Just say praise God for that. Just just say praise God for that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. about you today, saints, but I am thankful, forever grateful for amazing grace. Amazing grace that is, holds me every single day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am yes, so grateful. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please rise as you are able, as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy and universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue our service this morning with the prayers of intercession. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation, saying, the Lord says, I hear your cry for help, and I'm here. For the church and its leaders, we pray. We pray for the support of all deacons, pastors, and bishops, and for all who serve and teach your people. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith, with love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interfaith commitments. 
the Lord says, I hear your cry for help and I'm here. Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution, global climate change and lack of care. We pray for those enduring extreme temperatures and power outage, those suffering as a result of wildfires and those who are putting themselves at risk to bring those fires under control. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect all animals and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that we all may have what we need. The Lord says, I hear your cry for help and I'm here. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders that they may govern with love and grace and we may know peace in our world, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. The Lord says, I hear cry, your cry for help and I'm here. Your people still remember and bear the scars of tragedies that affect us all. Today, as we remember the attacks of September 11, 2001, help us to continue to seek resolve and peace in you. We lift our prayers and remembrances of that day to you now. And brothers and sisters here in the sanctuary or online, if you want to say a special prayer aloud or enter them in the chat, you may do so. Heavenly Father, uh, September 11, 2001 has impacted each and every one of us, whether we had loved ones lost or friends, but just the mere fact that our nation has suffered so and is still suffering. Every day, there's not a day that someone hasn't passed because of cancer as a result of 9-11. So we are still suffering from the effects. But Lord, we know that all these 20 years, 21 years, you have given us the wherewithal to continue to, to look to you, continue to support each other um, Father, we just pray that we will look at 9-11, look back and see how um, this tragedy brought our country together as a nation. Unfortunately, we have forgotten. But God, let your Holy Spirit ignite our spirit to remember. Remember that tragedy and remember that it affected us all black, white, rich, poor, it affected us all. So let us use 9-11 as a guidance to come together as a nation, whether we are black or white, rich or poor. The Lord says, I hear your cry for help and I'm here. Your children wander homeless and go without food and the basic necessities of life. 
Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with illness of any kind. Comfort all who are sick or grieving. Today, God, we also pray for those who are a part of this community, who we name before you now. Prayers for healing and comfort. I ask for Carol, for Noria, for Ernestine, for Dana, for Glenda, for Jordan, and Taylor, and all the family. For Virginia, for Diane, the Sudler and Honesty families. For Beverly and family, Yolanda and family, Beverly Chambers, Lamar, Sherry, Irvin, Monte, Julia, Pastor, Richard, Lee and Pat, Pastor Cara, Pastor Brenda, Brenda, Medlin, Dorette, Zenitha and Clement, Bernice, Bruce and Rita, Paul, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Ernestine, Emmy, sorry, and Ernestine. <clears throat> May they know the comfort and healing power of your presence. The Lord says, hear your cry for help, and I'm here. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build us, build us up as we endeavor to be in ministry in this place and with our community. May we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. The Lord says, I hear your cry for help and I'm here. We also now pray for ourselves. Hear our desires of our hearts for the secret burdens we lift before you now, either silently or aloud. So now I invite my brothers and sisters, if you want to pray the ones in the sanctuary aloud or silent, and our brothers and sisters in, in, in the Zoom, on the Zoom, if they have any prayer requests, or any special prayers, they can put it in the chat and Brother Mark will in, in turn, you know, give it to me and I will say it out. Make us bold in our witness to invite others into this holy family. The Lord says, hear your cry for help and I'm here. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Today, we offer memorial prayers for Glenwood Bryant. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share your eternal life with you. The Lord says, I hear your cry for help and I'm here. 
gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have received much from God. Grace, mercy, abundance, the love of Christ, and the gift of life itself. In our worship, we praise God and give God thanks for these gifts. Let us now offer what we can as a, as a way of saying thank you. In gratitude for God's generosity, let us share God's abundance with one another. I ask you at this time in sharing the abundance to hold your checks, your phones, whatever manner of giving that you choose, Please raise them high above and let us say this prayer together. When we could not find our way, you came searching for us. So may our gifts be used to bring hope to those who cast aside by the world. Peace to those who are troubled and grace to all who are alone. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise as you are able. May the God of the lost be with you. People of God, lift up your hearts to the one who searches for you. God's beloved treasure, offer your thanksgivings to God. It is good, it is right, a good and joyful thing that always and everywhere to give our thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Even though we have often failed and failed you and fallen short, you have never failed or forsaken us. And so with all your people on earth and the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the The wise seek after you, God, God of grace and glory. You, for you sent Jesus, our Lord, to us. Like a woman searching the shadows for a lost coin, he comes to find your greatest treasure. 
Like a brother who has lost touch with his siblings, he comes to reconcile us as your family. Like a sister who would stay awake while her younger children, while the younger children sleep, he comes to be our friend in every moment, in every place. Like a shepherd who would face danger to rescue his sheep, he goes to the cross experiencing our death so he can carry us into the resurrected life. In the night when our Lord was to be betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it. And he gave it to all who were present, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat of this bread, do this in remembrance of me. As was the custom after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it, gave thanks for it, and then gave it to all who were present, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. As we gather at this feast, as we, know, <clears throat> as we know we have been completely accepted, we proclaim the mystery that we call faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As we come to this feast, pour out your Holy Spirit on all gathered under the sound of my voice. This company of sinners who long to be right living people and pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. As we eat of the bread of life, strengthen our hearts and our spirits so that we may search also for the lost. As we drink from the cup of grace, may we be found to be faithful as you have appointed us to be servants of all. And at, the t and at that time when we will be with you, gathered with all who were lost, just like us, and were found. We will join our voices in singing your praises, God in community, holy three in one. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. We are gathered by the Holy Spirit, whether we are here in the sanctuary or online. So let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God Let us now commune together. Beloved of God, my brothers and sisters, the body of Christ broken for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us all and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive now the charge and the blessing. People of God, go forth from this time together and imitate the Holy One in all you do. Live with love, Speak with kindness, touch with gentleness, walk with humbleness, and build up the kingdom of God. Go forth into the world and live in love, just as Christ has lived in and through you. And God's people said, Amen. May the wind be strong in, may the wind of God be strong in you. May it be neither too little nor too much for the gift of each day that is your life. May it be strong enough to deepen your roots in God. May it be gentle enough for you to catch the breath of life. May it teach you how to breathe the grace of peace of Christ into the life of this world, multiplying this blessing over and over and over again. Blessings to you today, beloved of God. Amen. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you.
for thinking in that robbery to be with us today on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. As always, it is my hope and prayer that something said today or sung today or simply being gathered in the presence of the beloved of God, that you have felt God's presence and that you have been lifted and given sustenance for your journey. God bless you all. See you Wednesday for Bible study and here again next Sunday in the sanctuary. Amen. She's muted. She's muted. Hi, Grandma. Happy birthday, they Mrs. Washington. They still muted. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's Happy right. birthday, Joy. This is Sherry. Yes, Sherry. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to make it to church this morning, but like my grandma used to say, she knew when the weather was going to be bad. The knee uh -huh. started talking to me. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, you look very pretty for your birthday. Birthday, yeah. I miss so Shepard. Good morning. Hey, Mr. Hey, Shepard. Marie. Look at me. Hey, Hi. how you doing? How are you? Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning. You. Good morning. Where's Pat? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, Queen. We love Pat. you. This is Robin. Hey. Good morning. Good Hi, morning. Robin. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Hi. Hi, Grandma. How you doing? Good morning to all my children. Good morning, Mother Shepherd. Hi, Pat. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Miss Shepherd. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, Karen. Good morning, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and good morning, Pat Karen. and Lee. As I've been telling everybody, I'm very blessed to make my 91 this today. Very nice. Yes. Back yes. To you, Miss yes, yes. Washington. <laughs> 91 years old today. What a blessing. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. May you have a wonderful birthday. Thank you. And so she, when they talk about 911, I said, I'm really sorry, but I'm happy for me. They're celebrating today again, every 9-11, they celebrate. That's right. In fact, they're having a big something in the city, my daughter says. She works in the city and said the people were on the train going in for some celebration they have. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they, they, yeah. they're dying, probably dying at the uh, mm -hmm. World Trade Good morning, Good Shepherd Beloved. Good, Good morning, morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Glad to see you all. Yes, Lord, Happy service. birthday. Safe, Pastor. What was that, Sherry? I'm glad you are back safe. Well, thank you, thank you. It was a good vacation. I was glad to, to get away for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Mother Shepherd. Helps. Hi, Vielka. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi Vielka. Hi. <laughs> Let me call you, me call you oh, back. Oh, lady. Hi. Hi. Hi, Mrs. Jones. Hi. Good morning. Looking Look good, you. Mrs. Jones. Thank you. We love you. You yes, know, I keep trying. You. Good morning, Vielka. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. How are you? 
I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Children and the grannies. Oh, everybody's doing well. Thank you. You look good, Bielka. Oh, you look good. Look at you. <laughs> Everybody looks good. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Always, well, always, always, always good to good see the to faces, see right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, I can't see go. anybody, but everyone sounds good. So God bless you all. <laughs> this is Robin. <laughs> Love you all. Miss you. Hi, Robin. Good morning. Hi, Robin. Hi, good morning, Hi, Pastor. Uh, nice sermon. Yes, best. amen. Robin, Praise Pastor. God for that. Amen. Thank you. Thank we you. Would, I think we were all looking at it the, the other way, that it was about the sheep. Yeah. Well, well, we are the sheep, right? Yeah, we are the well, we, are, we are those sheep that we, we are. are those, we are those sheep that is kind that are constantly being sought. Yes, we are. Yes, yes we are. We are being sought. He looks for us. And so, I don't know, Barbara, are you still on here? Happy birthday to you, too. It's Helen's birthday. It's, not, it's Bar Barbara. Um, oh, Barbara. Barbara's birthday, it. too. It's Joy's birthday and Barbara's birthday. Yes. Today. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. <laughs> So I pray that you all have a wonderful week. And I will... See, see you, you Wednesday. I'll, I'll be with you, some of you who join on Wednesday morning for yes. prayer. And then those who join evening. us on Wednesday evening for Bible study. And then again next Sunday. Yes, yes. 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 Everyone, yes. so you continue to stay well. Pastor, have, a get a have a wonderful week, everyone. I'll try to do one of those uh, uh, <laughs> programs that we are doing at the end of the month. The Black History uh, Program. I'm going to think about it and look at, see what I okay, can Okay, because now that we have the technology that the folks, you folks here online can speak. I mean, we can't, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Right. So um, well, if you're willing to do one, that would be great. Just let me know. Give me a call and let me know. I will let you know. But okay. what's that? I say I will let you know. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all so much. Have a great week. All right, you okay, too. So well, Get God yourself bless you all. Blessed. God bless all of you. Bless everybody. Take care. God bless you as and well. Enjoy. Enjoy. Just have a beautiful day. Child, look, when I woke up this morning, it was beautiful. Even with yes. the rain, it was beautiful yes. as far as I was concerned. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you Praise so God. much. Thank you. Praise God. God. Yes. God. Yes. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. Enjoy. Everybody have a blessed week. Hi, Mark. Oh, he's muted. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Mark. I was asking for you yesterday. Okay. I hear you was out playing basketball. <laughs> Try, trying to get a little exercise, Sherry. <laughs> Trying to keep, trying to keep good. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's everything. <laughs> everything is good. Good, good. I'm still trying to adjust. I'm still in New York, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. All I'm right. So, I'm so used to walking out my door and going in stores and doing different things. I can't mm -hmm. do that now. I'm too far away. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. All righty. Five. Well, we got to get down there and see you. I, I told Rona, you guys better come down here and see me. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Especially yep. when you go see Preston. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we'll talk. You got to tell me how far you away from Preston, and it, it'll make it a little easier to coordinate that. In Charlotte, right? Yes. About an, I think we have to say about an hour or so. OK. All right. Not then too we'll bad. Here. Right. But I'll be there in December. I'm coming to I'm coming back home in December. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see you. <laughs> so I see all you guys in December. God spare me life. <laughs> all right. All righty. Uh, all right. So I'll talk, we'll talk to you soon, Sherry. All right. Take care. Love you. Love you too.